What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and I have a quick question for you. Have you ever sat around watching the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime and think to yourself, some of these cards are really cool, but when I pick them up here in real life, they look kind of different. Well that's because Yu-Gi-Oh! is infamous for using different artworks in the anime versus the artworks that they print of the same cards here in the TCG. Now sometimes the differences can be very very minute, but sometimes they can make a world of a difference. So in this series we're going to be talking about some card arts that appeared in the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime exclusively and have yet to be seen here in the TCG. For today's episode we're going to be focusing on the original Yu-Gi-Oh! anime which is the Duel Monsters series. Now the first card we're going to talk about is personally one of my favorites and that is Machine Duplication. Now you might know Machine Duplication for its uses in Card Trooper way back in the day as well as its continued use in the Cyber Dragon archetype, but funny enough you may not know that the original person to use Machine Duplication was Yami Merrick all the way back in the Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monsters anime. Machine Duplication aired in episode 127 where Merrick used this card on his Plasma Eel to summon two more copies from his deck. It's very similar to the TCG effect. However, you may have noticed that Machine Duplication in the anime is actually a continuous spell and it has the effect where if your monster's attack becomes greater than 500 or this card leaves the field, then the two monsters that are special summoned by the effect will also get destroyed. Now this is not an effect that carried over into the TCG, our effect is just straight to summon two monsters and it's still a very broken card to this day. Now don't get me wrong, by no means is the TCG artwork bad or worse than the anime artwork, but I really like this ominous purple smoke that's coming out of the machines as well as the more cartoony design in the anime artwork. I will say that I can definitely see this machine duplication artwork being printed as one of the lost art promos here in the TCG just because I don't think this artwork needs to be censored by any means, so for that reason they can just print it with no problems. And I think it would look really good in that lost art ultra rare. Now the next card I want to talk about is actually two separate cards. It's the Eye of Tamias as well as the Claw of Hermos. These two cards are absolutely stunning in the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime. Now you guys might be wondering, why am I not talking about the Fang of Critias? Well the Fang of Critias artwork is actually the only one that translated here into the TCG. The anime artwork showed the entire dragon, showed all of Critias. So it was a lot more specific with these two, I'm not exactly sure why, but I think the artwork should definitely be released here in the TCG just because I don't see anything wrong with them, I don't see any reason for them not to be released the way they were in the anime, and I think showing off these entire dragons just brings a lot of nostalgic feel to these cards. On top of that, Konami could really sell these cards to a lot of its casual anime fans and honestly, I would purchase them for myself because I think they would be really, really cool. Now, we all remember the Orichalcos arc, right? And one of the main villains in that arc was Raphael. In episode 158, Raphael summons his boss monster, Guardian Eidos. Now the anime artwork for Guardian Eidos made so much sense with Raphael's character, the ominous vibes, all that villainy stuff. It made a lot of sense, especially with the Eidos looking directly at you, looking very fierce, whereas here in the TCG we got a much more softened version of the card. And that's not to say it's a bad thing, however, I just think the anime artwork shows off the personality of Raphael's character and the arc as a whole, so I really think this card can come to the TCG as a lost art as well. From what I see, I don't think anything really needs to be censored on the card, so they could just print this and honestly, I think it would be a really good seller, especially with the Lost Art promotion. People just have to buy some booster packs and you know, they get a free Guardian Eidos with this super cool artwork. Now some cards I just really want to mention because I did think the anime artworks were really cool. We don't have to go super in depth with them, but it was Drilago. I think Drilago's anime artwork is really cool. Keep in mind Drilago is also a normal monster in the anime, which is something different. And a card that I think should really come here in the TCG because the anime artwork is just insane is Different Dimension Dragon. In the anime artwork you can really see Different Dimension Dragon going through the different dimensions which I always thought was really cool. Now again I don't know how these cards would be printed here in the TCG but they are two anime artworks that I think should be mentioned. Now the last card on this list is definitely the most controversial but I think this is a card that we could definitely see as a lost art. I know I've said that for a few cards already, but this one I can definitely see, and that is Dragged Down to the Grave. This card originally appeared in episode 93 of the Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monsters anime, where Shizu Ishtar used it in her duel against Seto Kaiba. I think this card is absolutely stunning the anime artwork. It shows off the actual crosses as the graves, 
which Konami has always been known to censor in the past. However, a few years ago when the Lost Art promotions became a thing, Konami released the Lost Art for Foolish Burial, which featured the cross as its gravestone. So since they've already done that, why can't they do that for Drag Down to the Grave as well? I think this card is absolutely scary and horrifying with the anime artwork. I think the zombie actually grabbing the old man's arm is really cool. And honestly, in the TCG artwork, I'm not a big fan of all these green winded stuff. I don't even know what to call them. These green stripes that appear on the card art. In the anime, it's just really dark. It really just signifies what the card is supposed to do, which is take your cards and put them in the graveyard. So I think this card should definitely be a lost art in the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG. So that wraps it up for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. Make sure to like and subscribe if you guys did. And let me know in the comment section down below if I missed anything that you guys would like to see here in the TCG. Now keep in mind there's a lot of episodes spanning the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime so I definitely didn't hit them all and if you guys know of any I would love to know as well. I really appreciate each and every one of you, thank you guys all for watching and with that Spanko signing out. Peace.